Hey friends, it's Laurie. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today I'm making three fall mini tiered tray DIYs. I did use mostly Dollar Tree supplies, but a few things that I had on hand. You can always change up the colors to match your home decor. I really hope you enjoy them, so let's get busy. I'm starting my mini scarecrow by using one of the foam dice from the Dollar Tree and you can use any color that they have. It won't matter because we're going to be painting it. I'm using a cocky tan color but choose any color you'd like. To make it easier to paint I'm using one of the wooden skewers from the Dollar Tree and I'm just sticking it into the bottom. Now using my paint I'm giving it two complete coats. With my dice dry, I'm using a pencil and I'm going to roughly sketch out two ovals for the scarecrow's eyes. I'm now using my paint pen to outline them and fill in the centers and you can always use paint or even a permanent marker. To accent the eyes, I'm using some white acrylic paint and I'm painting two half circles, one on each. I darkened them up a bit and then using my paint pen I added on two dots and you can always use the back of your paintbrush. I then added two eyelashes to the eyes. For my scarecrow's nose I'm using a thin piece of wood and you can always use a craft stick and all I'm doing is cutting out a small triangle. Now that I'm happy with the size I'm giving it a coat of orange acrylic paint. Now that it's dry and to attach it, I'm using some hot glue. I then added on the mouth using my paint pen and then some lines to mimic stitching. Now that I'm done and to add on the scarecrow's hair, I'm starting with a large handful of raffia. I'm also using my finger protector. You can pick these up at the Dollar Tree. They come three to a package. And because we're working pretty closely with the hot glue, they'll definitely prevent burns. I'm taking a small handful of the raffia. I'm adding some hot glue to the top of the scarecrow's head and then attaching it in place. Once that's attached, I'm just continuing on and adding the raffia to the scarecrow's head. While I was adding the raffia, I wasn't super fussy and once the top was complete, I then turned it around and added some onto the back. When I was done to finish up, I added some hot glue to the back and then I added some raffia hanging from the top of the head and down over the back. It has some crazy hair going on and now all I'm doing is using my hot glue gun and attaching the hair to the side of the scarecrow's head. I wanted to pop in and let you know that today I'm participating in my monthly friend collab group and it's being hosted by my sweet friend Liana from Liana DIY. This month we have three guest hosts, Lini from Crafty Lini, Catherine from A Perfect Place to Start, and Brenda from Rustic and Lace DIY. They all have amazing channels and you can check them out along with my other crafty friends by clicking on the playlist linked below in my description. If you're new and you're coming over from the playlist, please consider clicking on that little red subscribe button below and leaving me a big thumbs up. And to all my returning friends, you know I'm always so happy to see you and I love reading your comments. To make the base for my scarecrow, I'm using 12 of the tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree. I'm attaching them together with my Starbond thick glue. I absolutely love this glue because it sets natural wood up super quick and I have the company linked below in case you'd like to check it out. Using my glue, I'm now attaching the blocks side by side in rows of four.
with my first row of blocks in place. I'm then adding on my second and third. As I'm adding the blocks together, I'm making sure that the ends all line up evenly. Within about two minutes or so, the block has completely set up. So using my orange acrylic paint, I'm giving it a complete coat. Now that it's dry, adding the two together is super easy. I'm just adding some hot glue onto the top of the block and then placing down my scarecrow's head. I'm once again using my glue gun and adding some to the side block and then just placing down and attaching the raffia hair. After both sides, I then attach the hair to the back of the block. To neaten up the raffia hair, I'm now using my scissors and cutting it flush with the bottom of the base. Once that was done, I then cut all the raffia loops. I'm using a four inch straw hat for my scarecrow and you can pick these up at Hobby Lobby and Michaels and I think you can even find them at Walmart. To give it a bit of a rustic look, I'm cutting in some irregular V shapes around the outside brim of the hat. And this is just my personal preference. You can always just leave the hat as is. Now that it's all cut on the outside, I'm using my scissors and I'm kind of punching a hole through the top of the hat. I hot glued some raffia inside the hole and then trimmed off the top. To embellish the hat, I'm using a leftover piece of quarter inch buffalo check ribbon. I attached the end to the hat, measured the size, I trimmed it off and then attached the other end. To accent the hat, I'm adding one of the fall leaves from the Dollar Tree and one of their small sunflowers. I'm then adding a hint of green by attaching a simple leaf to the back. To attach it, I just added some hot glue to the top of the scarecrow's head and then just popped it into place. To finish up, I'm using some of the Dollar Tree Buffalo Check Ribbon and making a simple bow. When I was done, I trimmed both tails to the same length. And now all that's left to do is hot glue it to the front of the base. Now that I'm done, this cute scarecrow is ready for my fall tiered tray. To make my pumpkin, I'm using three of the regular size canning lids. And if you do any canning, you know that once you use the lid, you pretty much have to throw it away. So this is a great way to recycle them. I'm overlapping the top on one side and then the other. Now that I have my spacing, I'm turning the two over and then hot gluing them together. I'm now adding my third lid, making sure the spacing is even on both sides. To make my pumpkin stand up, I'm using two of the tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree. I'm adding some hot glue on the back bottom of my pumpkin and placing down one of the tumbling tower blocks. With that in place, I'm now adding on some hot glue and then placing on the second. With the added blocks, now your pumpkin can stand up on its own. 
to turn my pumpkin orange, I'm giving it a heavy coat of this orange spray paint. Now that it's dry, and if you've followed me for a while, you know that I love to splatter, so I'm going to use some of my brown acrylic paint and give it an accent. I placed a small amount on one paintbrush and then tapped away with my second. Now that it's dry, it's time to add on the pumpkin stem, and I just picked this small stick up outside. It kind of had a flat end, so I thought it would work perfect on the pumpkin. To add it, I placed some hot glue on the back and then attached it in place. Now that I'm done, sometimes it's really easy for the metal to scratch, so I used my clear matte spray paint and I gave it a complete coat. I want to make some tendrils for my pumpkin, so I'm using some of the jute from the Dollar Tree. I used a piece of clear tape and attached the end of the jute to my pencil. Now all I'm doing is twisting it around in a spiral. Now that I'm done, I'm attaching this end with a clear piece of tape. To help keep the jute keep its shape, I'm using some Mod Podge. Using my foam brush, I made sure to dab the Mod Podge completely around the pencil. Now that it's dry, I'm just sliding it right off of the pencil. I now have these tight little spirals, so I'm removing the excess from the end and then just kind of pulling them apart. Once I have the length that I want, I'm then cutting it free from the rest. I added some hot glue to the back next to the stem and then just attached it in place. To add on the second tendril, I just followed the same instructions. With those in place, I'm now adding on two leaves, and I already had these on hand, but you can use pretty much anything you'd like. I added some hot glue on the back next to the stem, and then attached both in place. To finish up, and this step is completely optional, I'm using some of the buffalo check ribbon from the Dollar Tree and making a simple bow. I cut two short tails, and then using my glue gun, I attached it at an angle on the top. And with that, these canning jar lids turned into a perfect pumpkin for my tiered tray. For my home sign, I'm using a 10 inch piece of the Dollar Tree wood and I'm cutting it down to 6 inches and then giving it a coat of white acrylic paint. Now that the paint is dry, I'm going to use my pencil to add on an accent. I'm rubbing the side of my pencil on the outside edges of the sign and then I'm just kind of rubbing it in with my fingers. I worked my way around the sign until all four sides had a smoky accent. Now that I'm done, I'm adding on a one and a half inch buffalo check ribbon and I had picked this up at Michael's. I wrapped it around my sign and then cut it to size. I added on some hot glue and attached it to my sign, making sure to center it on the wood. I'm using the buffalo check ribbon for my sign, but I think any style of ribbon would work for this sign. With my ribbon attached in place, I'm using some of these wooden letters from the Dollar Tree. I'm using the letters HME and I'm giving them a coat of my white acrylic paint.
Now that the paint is completely dry, I'm once again using my pencil and giving my letters the same accent as I gave the sign. I'm rubbing it along the outside edges and when I'm done, I'm rubbing it in with my finger. If you can't find these wooden letters at Dollar Tree, you can always use your Cricut or even some stick-on letters. I think these letters would look great in black as well, and then you would just omit this step. Instead of using the letter O in my sign, I'm using one of these small sunflowers from the Dollar Tree. Attaching everything together is super easy. I'm first finding the placement and the spacing on the sign. I removed the stem from the back of the flower and now using my glue gun, I'm attaching the letters and the flower onto my sign. You could always change up the sunflower to a heart or a snowflake and this sign would work for all different occasions. Now that everything's in place, this sweet home sign is ready for my tiered tray. Here we are at the end of the video and I hope you enjoyed making these fall tiered tray projects with me. Please be sure to check out the playlist and if you're new to my channel, don't forget to click that little red subscribe button below. I hope you all have an amazing day and I will see you soon. Bye everybody!